So the Prophet ﷺ used to dress up for who? For his family. How many of you? And I challenge you, it's a Friday. We're talking of the best husband, the most, the, the most blessed of all creation, the highest in rank of all. I tell you one thing, we need to follow him. Let's not just pay lip service to it. It's not just about lip service, my beloved brothers and sisters. Dress up, you go home, take pride in your hair, take pride in your clothing, what you look like, what you smell like. You come home, they should look at you and feel attracted. Come on. The Prophet ﷺ was intimate with his spouses and he fulfilled that right of his spouses. How many of us, a month passes, we haven't even been intimate with our halal wife. She's busy waiting. She's dressing up. She's trying to attract you. I'm tired. You're tired for what? There's an ibadah to happen at night. Some of us might be weak for tahajjud, but you can't come and complain that you cannot be intimate with your own spouse. You get a similar reward. Wallahi. And I'm not ashamed to speak about it. I've spoken about it several times because men are guilty of thinking that women don't have sexual needs. This was the Prophet ﷺ. He tells the companions, Fi budu'i ahadikum sadaqa. Remember when you're intimate with your wife and you fulfill her needs and you satisfy her, it is an act of charity. The Sahaba were rightly so. They asked the question, oh wow, is it really a charity? He says, well, if you put it in haram, would you get a sin? So. They said, yes, we would get a sin. Well, if you put it in halal in a proper way and you're conscious of the fulfilling of the rights, you definitely get a reward. That's the messenger. That's the husband. So when you get home and you are intimate with your spouse, remember, even during the menstrual cycle, the Prophet ﷺ used to do everything besides intercourse with his own spouse, subhanAllah. He, and we cannot get into further details, but the Prophet ﷺ has explained this to a certain extent. We stop at that extent. He says everything besides the act itself, because you and I know that is prohibited during the menstrual cycle, but you can still do a lot, subhanAllah. You can still do a lot. Many people, oh, so you're on your cycle. All right, see you after a week. What's going on? I'm being honest. That's a woman. It's not her fault. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Treat them with respect. That is a husband. That is what the Prophet ﷺ told us. He instructed us. He said it with his own mouth, his blessed lips. And we sit here saying, I'm a good Muslim, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you hear Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, everyone should be saying, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But that's not the only right. We say it loudly, but our lives are far away from the same, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How? Do you think that's the only right that the Prophet ﷺ has? Is that when you say his name, you must say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is extremely important. Yes, it is blessed. Yes, it is a must. Yes, you must not miss it. But that's only a part of it. Live your life, then you will understand that your life is a whole celebration. The whole life is a celebration because you come home, your wife is happy, you are happy, you are focused. The problem with us is we're focused on another woman somewhere outside. That's what it is. We're focused on another person outside. Subhanallah. Astaghfirullah. May Allah protect all of us. Now when you come home and it's halal and it's a sadaqah and it's a charity and your wife has been waiting for you and at times she's actually looking forward to it. She's protected herself as best as she can. And you know what? You just say, I'm tired. Tired for what? If there was a football match, you would have forgotten your tiredness. May Allah forgive us. If there was a UFC match, you would have waited until three in the morning. But for your wife, up to 11 also, you can't wait. Learn, learn my brothers and sisters. Learn the true sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. He was very open in his advice. We do not speak about it from the pulpit. And that's why I really salute those who came up with such a beautiful topic. Now what happens is at night, the Prophet ﷺ taught us that if you don't have anything constructive to do after Salat al-Isha, go to bed. Why? Wife is waiting for you. The problem with us, we'll go to bed but still be on WhatsApp until 2 in the morning. Right? Subhanallah, the wife tosses and turns this way and that way. I hope it's not the other way around, mashallah. But tossing, turning, and you're not getting the message. Subhanallah, she's trying to touch you and you say, hey, wait. But where is the Islam in you? Your Islam should make you think, why am I taught to come to bed here? For what? I'm supposed to go to bed because I have a spouse. Why did you get married if you don't want to spend the nights with your wife? For what? Sit with her, talk to her play with her, be intimate with her, fulfill her rights, satisfy her, go to bed, get up for Salatul Fajr or Tahajjud and don't be ashamed to have a shower. Even if the whole house knows what happened at night, so what? It was halal. It's a reality. It's an honor. It's an honor. 
for someone to shower early in the morning and they are thinking to themselves i wonder what the whole home is going to think but anyway i followed islam this was islam not ashamed your children will grow up doing the same thing but some of us are so ashamed we say hey it's fajr but i don't know allah opened your eyes for you but i'm gonna go for a shower don't worry allah will forgive me i'll just make it at eight o'clock what may allah forgive us truly Imagine I'm talking about it from a pulpit on the day of Jumu'ah because we are proud to acknowledge that is Islam. Allahu Akbar, it's my religion and yours. It's my religion and yours, subhanallah. Let's go further. The Prophet Sallallahu at times he had his spouse comb his hair and so on. He played with their hair as well. So much of this romance and intimacy that is described for us. It's, it's, it's actually sad how far we've become the only sunnah that the men actually talk about or a lot of them talk about is, is, don't pretend like you don't know guys. Subhanallah. Second wife, it's a sunnah. Wow. Second is a sunnah. What sunnah? Start off with these things. Correct it is. I'm not denying it, but I'm saying you haven't even lived as a husband yet. And you want to start being a husband for more. You've messed up one's life. You're going to mess up all the other's lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding.